So Danny, this business of dispersion and diffusion is pretty complicated stuff, but I was a little concerned about this notion that, uh, that d dispersion always dominates. I mean, is it always that way? No, John, you're right. I am probably overstated the dominance of hydrodynamic dispersion over diffusion uh, because my mindset is more from uh, saturated experiments and aquifer flow. Uh, and in fact, in, uh, in uh, unsaturated soils or in under most uh, Vedo zone conditions, this is probably not the case. Yeah, you know, it, it, when you think about an aquifer, the water comes and it moves laterally long distances and rather quickly. And so many of the people who've studied dispersion have been looking in aquifers and systems where there's movement of meters per day even. And the funny thing about the unsaturated zone that people don't think about so much is that given that a lot of the water evaporates, even if there's a meter of rain a year, oftentimes the movement is less than a meter a year, which is like a millimeters per day, three millimeters a day. And that, when you look at the, the published data, it all of a sudden, whoa, wait a second, we're all the way on the left of that curve. And that means that diffusion, unlike in the saturated zone, in the unsaturated zone, diffusion is really a key player. And so they're often of the same magnitude, or sometimes diffusion is much larger, but dispersion, of course, can be important. Yeah, so, so uh, diffusion in this sense is a key player in the mixing uh, of, the, uh, of solute or the expansion of a contaminant into the volumes of uh, soil. The other point that uh, John made, and I should have been a bit more careful, is the terminology of dispersion. I use the term hydrodynamic dispersion, but you can find it in other terminologies. Uh, exactly. So you'll find authors who are saying things like, you know, the dispersivity and the hydrodynamic dispersion and the dispersion coefficient. You have to look at what that author is saying. In our book, we're going to be very clear that if the hydrodynamics is driving it, if the movement of water is driving it, that's hydrodynamic dispersion. If molecular diffusion is driving it, that's diffusion. Yeah. If they're combined, we'll call it the diffusion dispersion coefficient, which explicitly tells us we're considering both. And we're going to be a little, a little careful on that, but when you look at other literature, please be mindful. One other point I want to make, Danny, is we often get stuck in the world of water. But don't forget that the same effects happen in the gas phase, and the Vedo zone is full of gas. The diffusion coefficients in the gas phase are 10,000 times higher. Now, it turns out spreading goes with the square root of the diffusion coefficient. So that means, though, that gas phase diffusion, which can drive a lot of contaminants around through the Vedo zone, happens meters per day, whereas diffusion in the liquid phase is often millimeters per day. Yep. So we have to really keep in mind that there's, in, we're living in a land of two media, liquid and gas, and they, they diffuse very differently. So the, just uh, in closing, uh, one, more, one last comment is that in the uh, d convection dis uh, diffusion dispersion equation that we'll derive next, uh, we'll use capital D uh, generically to signify the effective uh, effects of diffusion and dispersion joint. They both operate on the gradient of solutes uh, in, uh, in other words, the, the gradient of solutes in space, unlike the convective stream that operates on the concentration. So we'll come back to that in a future, in a future uh, videos.